Fred Film Radio from the London Film Festival. I'm Angela Cerbi. I'm here with JP Vallecheapa, Valle director of Dogs Don't Wear Pants. Um, it's a strange film, your film, you know? It's uh, funny sometimes, very disturbing, but very fascinating. And it starts with a, a grief, and then it goes all on another path. Uh, so basically the story is this man that loses his wife through a, a drowning incident, accident, and is obsessed by this death and he cannot find a way to overcome it. But at some point he finds one. Can you tell us through whom? Uh, through a dominatrix. Um, he goes into these triangulation sessions and regains her wife through these visions that he gets through this um, this as as asphyxiation. Yeah, it's a romantic comedy. It's a romantic <laughs> comedy. Yeah. How did you come up with this narrative twist, or this like alternative version of overcoming grief that your character has? Uh, you mean the the core idea the of core it. Idea, yes. The core idea is by another writer. It was proposed to me by the producer of the film um, two in 2014 when when I started writing the script. It was a um, uh, I took the core idea and then sort of created my sort of own own characters from it and own story, but. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, the idea was some, I mean, it was immediately started creating images and, and uh, emotions when I, when I heard it. I, I knew it immediately that it was a strong idea, but the trick was how to, how to tell the story mm -hmm. and how to combine all these kind of elements that are there, which is the grieving story and then of love story well there are several love stories and uh and uh how to get something that would be sort of would resonate psychologically and emotionally true and still have this unbelievable part in it mm. listen the one thing that i noticed watching your film is the angles the sh shooting angles that you choose which mm. are very specific very peculiar you get either very very close to the character, or you, or we see them through holes, through mm. mm, par partially, mm. not completely. It's like you you don't want to disturb. Mm. Is was this was this the idea, or or was another reason why you chose those specific angles? Uh, we shot the film uh, first of all. We, we shot it with one lens, and uh, I think that uh, the idea behind for is that I, I think that the, the sort of visual coherence this one lens uh, creates for the film, and actually almost all of the film is shot with one aperture, uh, except for a couple of shots. Uh, and uh, it creates this kind of subjectiveness also yeah. with it, that it, you can almost read it like it's seen through just from one point of view although they are external shots of the persons. And uh, uh, about the, these elements that are blocking the characters or, or seeing them as ref from reflections, I think it was, I mean, it was way to sort of tell about the mental state of the character. Mm -hmm. I used very little point of view shots and they are on, on a very critical spots in the film. Uh, and they are only, um, I mean, they are, and, and uh, so um, I tried to use these elements to sort of tell the, tell the man's, man's uh, what's, what's inside his head. And w w I mean, I was looking for films like um, um, uh, some, some films by um, Nagisa Oshima and, and um, who's the, who was the director who did, did the Pigs and Battleships? The Imamura, Shoei Imamura. And also an American uh, photographer, Saul Leiter. Uh, and uh, his 
way of using very saturated colors and also playing with the depth, this kind of focal areas mm -hmm. that uh, using blurred, uh, blurred pictures where the fo focus would be on some sort of, it would be on the surface of the window, just you yeah. could see just the dirt there. And those were the kind of visual influences. That when you, ch in, all, in all the sequences, when, where your character goes to his ses sessions mm -hmm. with the dominatrix, you manage always to show them not m morbidly, but like, like realistically without giving any judgment, mm. which is really interesting because normally in all the other films where s some of those uh, practices are told, there is always a kind of a moral judgment mm. through the viewing of mm. it. While in your film, everything is very flat, very like as it is. Mm. Uh, was it something that f uh, modified your way of shooting? I mean, how did you... Yeah decided shooting for that well i mean uh, it's it's w w when you get the kind of uh visuals that are in this uh, in this uh, bdsm world it's there's always of course the temptation to uh, start to aestheticize and and get te um, um, sort of um try to try to sort of follow the aesthetics there. But I, I, I think that w with this film, what I was interested in was the, was the characters and, and the faces especially. I think that this is a, this is a clo very much face close-up film. And um, I, I was very conscious of, of, of the way that I'm going to portray uh, portray these characters, portray... The, uh, the, yeah. the word of... Yeah, because I didn't want to... I mean, I didn't want to... I wasn't interested in the, this kind of eroticism uh, or, or, uh, or uh, kind of shock value of, of showing... Mm -hmm. finding the shock value in, in the way that I, I showed these people. Mm -hmm. It's also true that both of characters, the dominatrix one and the lead character, are they are alone in their own world, and yes. uh, they use this for the same purpose, basically. You know, I mean, mm. she she need she need this different persona to be mm. better and to try to fight to to flee from her own world, and he does the same. Mm. So those two solitudes yeah. uh, just meet. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the so, first one to <laughs> get it. Really? <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, yeah, it, it yeah, is. Yeah. It, it's pretty. Yeah. Uh, you you think about it, but then it's very obvious once they the first time they clicked, mm. like and then yeah. they and then they have they have to stop right away. Yeah. But there was something, especially in the in the dominatrix character when mm. when she's not the dominatrix, when she's like the regular girl, yeah. she shows. Um, she's not happy, she shows unhappiness, mm. she shows uh, loneliness. Mm. And that you understand after a while that this double persona is something yeah. that she needs to do besides yeah. the money and besides you know, all the, the yeah. necessity. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, I think that um, mo most of us are most of the time we are disconnected from anybody else and there's a longing to sort of for the connection. And it's it's I think in the core of the film it's it's about about this loneliness and solitude. Well, thank you very much. Thanks thank a lot to Yuka Pekka Valke, I'm the director of Dogs Don't Wear Pants from the London Film Festival, and Manjula Cherby for Fred the Festival Insider.